Hello family, I want to go over securely with you during this video, show you how you can utilize it, uh, some best practices for monitoring your classroom, as well as ensuring that we are able to document what students are doing on their devices during classes, uh, in case we need that information in the future for whatever reason. So I want to show you the different features that you can use, uh, as well as what it looks like once you get it rolling. So first thing, I'm just going to go ahead and show you a glimpse into a class that I know is already running so that you can see what that would look like. I know this class is already running because in the top right hand corner, I do have a countdown there. And right now, what I can pull up here is all the screens of my students in that classroom. So when you are, you can see if a student is not online. Uh, that could either be because one, you look and see the student doesn't have their Chromebook out, or two, sometimes students do have ways of logging into something other than their school Chrome account. In which case, if you see a student with their Chromebook out, but you do not see that they are, are online and securely, please submit a ticket with that student's name so that we can double check what that student uh, has going on there. Uh, we do wanna make sure all students are logging into their Chromebooks with their Foundation Academy information. They should not be able to log in any other way and that they are able to be monitored by us at all times. So again, you can see on here, you can see all of their screens. You can select students, all the whole class to do any of these functions up top, lock their screens in place. You can lock them on a particular website so they can't go to others. That can be great during an assessment. You can push a URL to the entire class, especially if you have younger students, if you don't wanna wait for them to type in that whole URL. You can also share your screen or their screen with one another, especially if a student has exemplar work. It's always great to share student work with others. You can send an announcement to the entire group that will flash up on their screen while they're working. Some reminders. Uh, you can also release um, here if you have locked or release a student from the class. So you also have two sorts. You can sort by first name or by last name. Anytime you change a sort or a feature, it is going to have to regenerate their screens. Uh, it doesn't usually take too long. Securely is a pretty quick system. And then up here, you have the class ends button. You can add time to your class or stop it, but the timer is important in order to get your class to begin, which we will go over soon. Also for an individual student selecting the three dots next to their name, you can pin their screen up top so that you're watching it and don't have to scroll through your screens. You can also select to see the history of their screen from different time periods, depending on when you have used the class. You can also send a chat directly to that student. And then you have exclude from class. However, please remember that if you exclude them from the class and securely, if they are not also removed from your Google Classroom, they will resync overnight into securely. And so it is important that you manage your securely in Google, Google Classrooms simultaneously if you're removing a student. Same goes for if uh, I send a sync, through RenWeb to Google Classroom to add a student, it will also add them into the Securely Classroom. So RenWeb, Google Classroom, Securely do communicate with one another. So if you have any issues, please Hello. make sure that you are, uh, one second, uh, yes, please make sure that you are updating or if you need help, send us a uh, quick little ticket and we will get that roster updated for you. All right, I'm going to take you out of here. So in the three dots in the top left, I'm going to go out and go to the device console where I can see the rest of my classes. I have a lot more than you're going to see. But a few tips about this. If you're a teacher leader and you see way more classes than you teach, that's because you're listed as a teacher on those courses. You can either talk to your principal and try to be removed as a teacher from those courses, or you can resort your classes here by updating the nickname. Uh, so if you go to the class name here in the nickname field, you can change that nickname and that will help to resort it. You can see the students listed here by roster. And then you can also see this class schedule below. It is helpful to create a class schedule uh, for each different class period because it helps you when starting the class, but you can also uh, create and enter the start information as you start each class, each class period. Up to you, I will show you how to do that in just a moment. I'm gonna go back out to our classes here. When you want to start a class, you're going to select start class. This class is actually already started, so we're gonna go back out of that. Let's find one that is not started. 
Let's try another random one. Good, this one has not started yet. So when you click start class and it has not begun, you are going to see all of these students. If your students are in another class and active, it will ask you if you want to kick them out of the other class, um, unless they're definitely in your class, don't do that. Some people though do forget to stop their classes and so it is okay to receive those students if that class has not been started. Over here on the left, you are going to see um, class times. If you haven't set up your class times already to start and end, then you are going to possibly see that this will default to the current time. And when it defaults to the current time, this is 9.45 right now, you'll notice that in the top right hand corner, the start now button is not available. So you wanna make sure to always extend that end time about an hour or longer if you desire, and then you'll see that start now button appear again. So make sure that the end class option that the hour is and time is not set to the current time if you are missing that start now button. You do have some other options. This helps you to lock down what students are doing or not. That is completely up to you. And then once you start the session, you will again see those screens that I just showed you previously from the other teacher's screen. To go back out, you click this back arrow and it will take you back here to all of these classes. Uh, all of your classes, again, are brought over from Google Classroom, so there is no real need uh, to create new classes uh, unless you have a club or something like that, in which case uh, I can help you do that if you would like, but please allow Google Classroom to sync for the most part so that you have all of that information there. If you have any questions, uh, please let us know. Uh, at the end of each class session, it should email you a summary of the class telling you who was on what websites. Again, this is great information for you to communicate with families. Also great information for you to be able uh, to monitor your students and manage your classroom successfully when we have devices one-to-one -one all over the school now. Again, if you have any questions, let us know. We are happy to help. Thanks, family.